Jay Gross here with the, yeah, from Ascension <laughs> Worldwide. I'm so happy that we're at the 2024 Sherm Conference, that's annual right. conference in Chicago. Um, didn't get some pizza this time, but that's okay. It's still early. You can get it's some still, tonight. Yeah, maybe some pizza and some whiskey as well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, Emily Dickens, we are here talking to you about civil conversations, not just civil conversations, but one million civil conversations. So I have tons of questions. I know we only have 10 minutes, but sure. the first question is, why civil conversations? Was it something in the data that Sherm saw? Was it something in uh, clients or, or your um, um, uh, the, the community that yeah. people- We that? go back to 2019. Okay. We did a takeover at the Oculus in New York City. Mm. And it's probably like, yeah, 2019. And we had some brand new state of the workplace data okay. that said toxicity, workplace toxicity was at an all time high, mm. that people didn't want to come to work. Mm. And the initial data pointed to the fact that the person who impacts your life the most at work mm -hmm. is your people manager. Absolutely. So and this is pre COVID. This is pre COVID. Interesting. So what Sherm says, okay, we can help with that, and we come up with this uh, this tool called the PMQ, the mm -hmm. People Manager Qualification, mm -hmm. and we think that can help because you know this. One day you're an individual contributor, mm -hmm. the next day you're the boss, right? And no one no has training. told you no training, <laughs> right? Now look, I'm a Get New Yorker, right? right? Uh, so I'm going to talk to you like I've, I talked to you know, and right. that you can't, you have to learn how. People, you have to communicate differently with each of your employees Absolutely. based on who they are and mm -hmm. what their needs are. And we needed to get better training about all the new things people were seeing in the workplace because people are bringing more of themselves to the workplace. Mm -hmm. And people mm -hmm. managers are being asked to be mental health advisors, mm -hmm. cheerleaders, counselors, cheerleaders, counselors, mm -hmm. and they have no idea how to do it. Absolutely. And they're trying to, to manage their life mm -hmm. and their experience in the workplace as well. So that was the first sign that things weren't well in the mm. workplace every year we do that same study and we continue to see that even with improvements in the people manager mm -hmm. that it's more than that it's that the person sitting beside you mm -hmm. is someone that either has a lot going on in their life mm -hmm. and every day there's something and it's impacting your workplace experience mm. or the two people over there one with the red hat and one with the blue hat mm -hmm. are always going at it mm. every day mm -hmm. and again impacting your experience if you're the person who wants to just go to work do your job mm. and go home you're going into a workplace every day where there's tons of things going on that have nothing to do with the productivity of that organization mm. or your business mm -hmm. and people are tired mm. because you're dealing with your own stuff absolutely and if you're someone who's passionate about politics mm -hmm. you and you're in and you just want to have a conversation you are feeling that people are looking at you differently because of how you tell them you vote i heard you in the other interview you said um, and I, very similar um, when we were younger you didn't talk about these Ooh. things a lot of things we didn't talk about but definitely politics was we, not one of them. we talked about not, sports but not yeah and actually you know for me it was so funny i talk a lot about i'm a huge sports fan but mm. my dad it's three girls and so of course we, we knew sports so to me that was a commonality where when men were talking and they were talking about a game last mm -hmm. night where I could insert myself and say, oh, well, well I know this, right? And so that opened so many relations because they're all like, oh, really? You know this. Mm -hmm. But politics is different. There were three things we talked about, how much we make, uh, politics and sex. Mm -hmm. And because <laughs> really people are feeling some way about who's making more than them. Absolutely. And it, that's causing conflict because mm -hmm. say you happen to find out or overhear. Or and use uh, uh, AI to look. You right. have to look it up, right? <laughs> right. Like you come in the office and you're like, well, I'm not doing this because mm -hmm. this person makes more right. than me and they do half of what I do, right? So there's all of that is internalized. People mm -hmm. are bringing that to the workplace. So that's number one. And then politics. And so it's not that we haven't seen politics in the workplace. It's that people are feeling like they're, it's being held against them. Got it. So we've heard, we've got data in the new civility index, mm -hmm. which is Sean's new research there that mm -hmm. says that people in blue states who happen to wear red a lot mm -hmm. for the other party mm -hmm. feel like they are not looked at for job uh, elevation mm -hmm. that people look at them differently or treat them differently in the mm -hmm. workplace because of who they choose to support mm -hmm. and then we see the flip side that people in, blue, in red states who are blue see the same thing that's not acceptable it's all about performance you know this in the Absolutely. workplace right and so what we've got to do is do a better job of just kind of pulling back from this and figuring out what are the things we can talk about we always talk about leading with commonalities mm -hmm. you know when you walk into a room you say where are you from 
right? right. Where did you go to school? Mm -hmm. And because you're looking for that connection, opportunity, that belonging. connection, that's a human Absolutely. feeling. We're, that's what we're looking for. So let's stop talking about the differences. Mm -hmm. But people don't know how to have conversations. And so, so out of all mm -hmm. this data you pulled, yeah. Sharon pulled, it was like, you could have done a lot of things. Yeah. But you were like, civil conversations. We think that is, I honestly think that there's some basic behaviors we learn as young children in kindergarten and mm -hmm. first grade mm -hmm. that we forgot. I honestly think there are some things we learned in civics 101 sure. that we forgot. Absolutely. And we need a reintroduction on better behavior. We, do, we need that. So if you're a you know, leader um, within your organization and you want to start having these civil conversations, uh, what does SHRM provide in terms of tools? Lots of tools. Information. Absolutely. So first, always we start with SHRM.org slash civility. Mm -hmm. Lots of content on that site. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number that, two. That's content free. Anyone? Yes. That? SHRM okay. and, and those pages are actually open. There's content for those who aren't SHRM members, oh, too. Okay. And then, you awesome. know, there's more content behind the wall. Too, yeah, you know, always, right? SHRM right, members, always, right? Right. Um, we're going to continue to update the civility index, which okay. is going to be available as we continue to update. So that's number one. Number two, the civility cards. Yeah, so we did this before, again, when we were like, um, we had these conversation cards before and we said, let's start that again. So okay. it's just like a deck of cards. Mm -hmm. And we saw that. You had them at your conferences. You would go to had tables. Them at the conference, and, and had them at right? Would, so now we're off. calling it civility cards, civility. right? <laughs> yeah. And it's so cute, right? And so offer someone a cup of tea, you know, if you don't drink tea, whatever mm -hmm. it is, and mm -hmm. let's kind of go through, let's talk about that. And I would just say individually, if you're a person who's a leader in the organization, sure. take a step back mm -hmm. and figure out how you can be an example of civility. Absolutely. It's hard work. We mm -hmm. all don't like feedback, uh, especially as people managers. And look, when you're hardworking, hard charging, I'm mm -hmm. one of those people, mm -hmm. you can come off as abrupt and non-feeling and a non-empathetic. Right. And so you got to first have some self-awareness mm -hmm. and say, what can I do to better communicate with my people mm -hmm. to make them feel like we are in one of the most civil environments Absolutely. that they've ever visited? Quick, hard question. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens when civility or civil, civil conversations go wrong? Um, and and um, is there training uh, on the site, like like actual virtual training to, to, you know, like there's the cultural concept, there's the DEI aspect. Yeah. And when I make a mistake, like, oh, my gosh, and I. I just shut the conversation out. Yeah. What, is there anything that... So we're working on that. You know, okay. we just launched this a few months ago. Really? Yeah, it's you been would amazing. Think, you would think, right? Whoever the yeah, marketing few, person was. Let me just do a shout out to my colleague on the executive team, oh, yeah. Tina Beatty, who Absolutely, came with this Tina. idea. And so she's done amazing work and she's got a team that we, it's grown much larger. We're going to be on college campuses. So I'm honored to be with a trustee civil with civil conversations. So, oh, right. um, you know, we've got, I know we've signed some um, agreements okay. and, um, but we're going to announce those, are but I'll just say, we are actually starting with some partners that we already have. Okay. So okay. for example, I'm a trustee at my alma mater and we have a very active SHRM chapter there. Oh, okay. So awesome. actually the number one HBCU SHRM chapter. And so when we thought Which about. Uh, North Carolina Central University. Okay, you hear okay. Eagle Prize. Okay. So um so I went to the um the advisor and said, Look, we're thinking about doing this initiative. Mm -hmm. We'd love to be able to introduce this in September on campuses when kids when students are back. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking at a couple of other campuses. We've got another campus that we're doing research with. So oh, wow. we understand because God, you know why this is important. Mm -hmm. This spring, our campuses were riddled with incivility. Mm -hmm. You all saw this. Mm -hmm. You saw people be unable to graduate. You saw mm -hmm. people couldn't make mm -hmm. it across the yard, mm -hmm. right? You saw this. These are your future workers. Absolutely. There is some guidance that they're going to need about assimilating into the workplace because it's a little different what you can do on campus mm -hmm. and what you can do in a workplace. So with the civil conversations, um, two things are happening. or One thing has already happened. After George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. uh, pandemic. And, 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 and it was amazing that Sherm saw this and kind of was like, at the forefront of that conversation mm -hmm. and there's an election Ooh, yes. Woo! that's all i want to say about that <laughs> and so i think this um one million civil conversations um initiative is i'm mean, gonna and i bought the shirt too right? I love With the that. matching you know. but it is going to be so critical yes, it is. as we move into the space and i live in a rural part of pennsylvania Ooh. Mm. 
And my and neighbors that's always a state that's always in play. Mm. Mm. And my neighbors, they have, you know, some flags and some hats that are different. And, yeah. and we sit down on my porch because everyone in our neighborhood has a porch and, and Look rocking at his chair. His idyllic lifestyle. Right, Look at right. this right here. And we have these uncomfortable conversations and we are civil. And so I'm excited to uh, I want you to, to share part. those online if they're if they get permission. I think there is something inherent in each of us where we can do this without tools, where we know how to be human to one another. Absolutely. And you all should, that's the content I want to see on TikTok and on okay. Facebook and Instagram, right? Because okay. I want people to see that and then be able to emulate it. I mm. think it takes one conversation at a time. Mm. You'll provide an adequate example for others who want to be part of this initiative. So don't say you're already doing your part and you don't even know it. I love it. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. you.